I am going to use the stool since it's here. The night Lionel killed me. We ate at the Olive Garden the night Lionel killed me. Wait, is it the Olive Garden or just Olive Garden? I noticed he didn't smell like body spray. Something was on his mind. But he told me he was just tired. He kept looking at his phone and then setting it face down on the table. I ate too many breadsticks and studied some of the nearby diners. Would the right word be diners or would it be customers? Diners are little restaurants my Grammy liked. The waitress at her favorite one had a glass eye. She was pretty. I'd spray my cereal with sugar from the big dispenser while my Grammy slurped at her coffee. Missy introduced me to Lionel. They were hooking up at the time. I liked his soft voice and the way he cocked his head to the side when he said things. He got us stoned and took us to a party in uh, Biddeford. I got stuck talking to a kid named Wheelchair Mike while Missy and Lionel went upstairs. He offered me sips from his 40 and told me he liked my nails. I told him I didn't want to sit on his lap, and I don't think he liked that very much. Part of me thought about doing it out of pity. Then he started telling stories about fighting other guys in wheelchairs and girls he'd slept with. Only about half of my chicken Alfredo managed to get eaten. The waitress put the rest in a box and placed it on the center of the table. Anything else I can get you? I could tell Lionel was annoyed that I would be bringing leftovers into his car. He liked to keep his car very clean and smelling nice. Actually, um, my Grammy never slurped her coffee. I don't know why I made that up. Lionel had diabetes. Lionel had diabetes. It sounded like diabetes when he said it. My dad always said it was diabetes. Somehow, Lionel stopped having it right around the time of his 24th birthday. He liked talking about his diabetes and his grandmama's diabetes. I didn't like it when he talked about it, and I don't know why. How Lionel killed me. Lionel secretly put sleeping pills in a warm glass of Franzia and set it down on the coffee table for me. It, it wasn't actually a glass, it was a cup, a very tall cup. We smoked weed and he played video games until I was fast asleep. After that, he lifted and carried me to his car and placed me lying down in the back seat. We drove over the Casco Bay Bridge and pulled to the side of Route 77 right before the bridge curves. After waiting until no other cars were coming in either direction, Lionel got out and pulled me from the vehicle. He then threw me off the bridge and into the icy water below. I woke up upon impact and thought I was dreaming. The night before, the night before Lionel killed me. I didn't see Lionel the night before, the night before he killed me. Missy and I went to the mall and she bought a pair of shoes at Aldo. We knew the girl working there, but she didn't hook it up. I'd have thought she'd have at least given us her employee discount. Then we drank our orange Julius's real slow in the massage chairs by Sears. Missy asked a lot of questions about Lionel. There had been a long period of time where Missy and I were enemies because of all that had happened. She'd hated me, but we were eventually fine again. We just never talked about Lionel. This night was different, though. It was as if she'd gotten over it completely. I was relieved because ever since I was little, I've always hated having people mad at me. A guy walked by and gave us a dirty look because I think he'd wanted to actually use the massage chairs. We sat in these chairs all the time, but never paid to turn them on. Missy said everyone in this mall was a shit dick and that it was time to GTFO, she said the letters. I giggled even though it wasn't funny or even in need of a laugh. It just felt like the right thing to do. Actually, it was kind of funny that she said shit dick, so maybe the laugh wasn't so bad after all. The time Lionel took four pills of ecstasy. One time, Lionel took four pills of ecstasy and began sweating uncontrollably. I brought him into the bathroom and made him take a cold shower. He got down on his knees, facing the opposite direction from the running water, and began to sob. And then he told me my eyeballs were shaped like the continent of Africa. When I first started going out with Lionel, I worked at Old Navy. I worked at Old Navy when I first started going out with Lionel. He didn't like that my job took up all of my time, so I wound up quitting. Shit, girl, you're with me. You don't need no job. My parents hated the fact that I was unemployed. If you're going to live here, you need to be working. I told them I was laid off. How could I tell them that Lionel just gave me money whenever I needed it? Eventually, I just stopped going home most nights. 
There was a guy who worked at Foot Locker who used to visit me a lot when I was working. His name was Arnold, and one day we were chatting when Lionel came in unexpectedly. Lionel got real close to him and stared into his eyes. What up, coach? But what Lionel didn't realize was that Foot Locker employees are dressed as referees, not coaches. <laughs> Arnold looked terrified and took off. I never saw him again. That was the shift before my last shift at Old Navy. But I liked that Lionel was bad. If it were illegal, Lionel likely sold it. He hawked pills, slang sneakers, sold pot, sold junk. Wait, should I have said if it was illegal? Grammar was never my strong suit. Lionel always seemed to think I didn't want to know about his wheelings and dealings, but quite the opposite was true. I'd get insecure when he tried to keep everything a secret from me. It made me think of the other girls he'd gone out with. Did they not want to know? Was I just like all the rest? It almost seemed like he wanted me to not like his line of business, but I liked that he was bad. It was exciting to me. I knew that having the guns around should have scared me, but for some reason they didn't. One time when Lionel wasn't home, I took one out from his dresser and studied it for a while. Just holding it was intoxicating, and dare I say, sexually stimulating. The only time I ever saw Lionel scared was the night we hit the deer on Route 111. We were riding in my geo prism the night we hit the deer on Route 111. Usually we cruised in Lionel's ride, but Lionel had lent his to Chris that night. Chris's name was pronounced Chris, even though it looked like it should have been pronounced Christ, but without the T. I thought about that a lot, but never brought it up. Not even to Lionel. The deer came out of nowhere. There wasn't even enough time to stop. Lionel screamed so loud after the impact that it hurt my ear. There wasn't much to like about Chris, and I liked him even less when I found out my car had been totaled from the accident. Yeah.